Okay, well, um, I'm here to talk about cognitive services, okay? Um, the reason why I'm going to talk about this is because, uh, well, um, who am I and why am I here? My name is Juliet, I am a tech evangelist at Microsoft, and although this might sound like um, something very religious, like I go you know, door to door trying to convince people of things, um, that's not what I do. I'd hate to do that, actually. What I do is I work specifically with ISVs, which are companies who um, develop software targeted for a specific industry, like a vertical. Um, it could be healthcare, uh, finance, things like that, okay? And what I do is I guide them or help them when they want to start with a certain technology, or I help them continue or remove any blockers when they're already using that technology, okay? And sometimes I get the chance to give talks like this one, okay, where I'm going to talk about cognitive services. So, what is cognitive um, services? It's a set of APIs and SDKs, and it's what we call um, like pre-built AI or models which are ready to go. So ready for you to use in your apps, in your services, in your sites, without having to be a data scientist or a machine learning expert, okay? You can use them if you're a developer, you can use them right away. Now, why would you want to use these? Well, you might have an app which uh, shows or manages images, and you want to understand what's in those images, you know, what objects there are, or what colors, or what the image means. Well, that's when you can use these APIs, the cognitive services, okay? It will give you that information, uh, which a human might see when they see an image, but an app normally doesn't by default, okay? Now, um, okay, so we divide them or classify them in categories. The first one is vision. It's all about images, videos, analyzing what's in those images. The second one is speech, so text to speech, speech to text, that kind of conversion. Language is very much used. It's analyzing a text and understanding what's in it, okay? What the text is talking about, if it's giving a good message or a positive message or negative, that kind of thing, understanding what's in that text, okay? Next one is knowledge. Everything about uh, knowledge bases, doing questions and getting information in return, and search. Search is searching. <laughs> It's very straightforward. And the last one, uh, the last category is labs. It's not, I wouldn't call it as an API in itself, though it is separate. Um, labs is basically when there are new services which are still not, they still don't have general availability, they're in preview, they're going to you know, um, come out soon, you can test them in the labs, okay? So you can be the first one to test, um, to test those future services, you could say. Now in each category, um, there are several APIs. I think the best way to see each API is to do a demo or you know, see it live. How does this work? What does it, um, what does it give us? Um, I'm going to talk about most of the APIs that we see here in the four, four, first four categories. I'm gonna mention one from search, and then I will not mention labs, but just so you know, if you want to be you know, one of the first ones to try the new services, you can go to labs, okay? So the first one. Um, the first API is from the vision category. It's the face API. And what it does, or what we can do with that API, is detect faces in an image. So we send an image, and it will exactly um, indicate where those faces are, and then give us some information about each face. Like, is the face from a female, or male, or more or less the age? Um, is that person wearing glasses, or is he bald, or um, things of that kind, okay? Is he happy, or sad, or things like that. Now, there are other things that this API can do, not just detect the faces in that and give us some information. It can do face verification, like it can verify if a face indeed uh, belongs to a person, okay, or to an ID. Um, it can compare images, um, faces from images. So it can tell you if this face from this image is the same one from the face in this image, so it's the same person, okay? It can also do, well, face grouping or uh, find similar uh, faces, things like that, all right? Now, um, I'm gonna do a demo of this so that we see it. Uh, let me minimize this. Da -da -dum. Okay, let me duplicate first. Uh, okay, now. Okay, so we have a set of, we could call them demo portals where you can start using these services right away. Like you can test them and see um, the information that you can get, uh, pass on your custom images, all of your data, just so it's like a fast way to start using them and see if maybe you're interested in you know, using them in your code later on, okay? One of the portals is this one for the, um, the Face API. You can see that here we have several of the services. The first one is uh, Face Verification. So it will compare the faces from the two images. 
Uh, this can be useful, for example, if you have, um, say you have a company and you want to give access to the building to just your employees. You could have you know, your database with photos of the, your employees and the people who try to enter the building. Um, you can take an image, check the face, compare it with your database and see if indeed that person is an employee, then you let them in. If it, does, if it does not match, then you can just tell them, you know, you're not the person that you say you are, so don't, you know, uh, don't go in, you cannot go in. Other things that you can test here is face detection. It's what I mentioned, you know, it will give you information about the faces in an image. So let me um, test with an image, okay? You can actually just paste uh, the URL of an image here and it will give you the results right away. Um, you can upload your local files. Let me see if I have, okay, there were no faces there, I think, here. Okay, here I think there are two faces. So I'm gonna upload a photo that I have on this PC and see what it returns. So um, it detected the two faces and as you can see, it gives me the information like age, um, is that person happy? Is he wearing glasses? Things like that, okay? And then on the right, we see what, um, what this API returns because basically, behind all of this, what it is doing is it's making a call to the API, uh, sending the image, and now it's receiving this result. The result is basically a JSON um, where we can see all of the elements that uh, we mentioned like age or even here you can see hair color, okay? Um, let's see more things here. Is he smiling? Yes, he is. Things like that. Okay, so we get all the information and then in our code we can parse that JSON and extract only the information that we need or that we want to use. Okay, so this is a, the way that it, this works. Okay, so other things you can test um, in this portal is em emotion recognition. So in the previous demo we could see it does tell you like is that person happy or sad? Um, but we can actually do a more in-depth analysis of the emotion of those faces. So let's test um, with an image. Okay, the previous one, they were both smiling. Let's find one where they're not. This one, I think. Okay. Okay, now it detected the two faces and it gives us more detailed information about the emotion. Like this one here. Um, I think it's, okay, the screen is cut off, but I think it says like it's mainly neutral because it has a 0 0.9 on the neutral category. Um, this one right here says it's like half and half happy and neutral, so it's like a half smile, okay? So we can use this to analyze um, the emotion of the people in the images that we're capturing. So maybe we're, uh, we want to know if our employees are happy or not and you know, introduce more activities so that they'll relax or things like that. But we can analyze, um, by analyzing their faces, we can detect if they're happy or not, for example, okay? And okay. Let me go back here. Um, it went into a crazy presentation control mode. Okay, no. Okay, so that was the phase API. Computer vision. Uh, computer vision is all about analyzing an image and knowing what's in it. Like, okay, so a human, you know, a person would look at this image and know that there are three people there. There are three paddle boards. They're on a beach with um, stones, it looks like. They have three hats. So what we want is a service that will analyze that image and give that kind of information to us, okay? That's when we can use computer um, vision, the computer vision API. It will give us that kind of information. Now, it doesn't only detect objects and colors and things. Um, we can also use it to detect text. So for example, if we have uh, handwritten notes, we can digitalize those, okay? We can uh, call the computer vision API, the OCR, service and it will return the text. And then we can take that text and use it with another, um, analyze it with another service, know what that text is about. You know, we can build a pretty interesting uh, project like this. Um, we can also generate thumbnails and recognize celebrities. Now it's, okay, celebrities is not just uh, Hollywood actors and things like that. Um, you could, for example, go to the news or newspaper, analyze the images, see how many politicians are, you know, appear in the, in the news. Uh, then analyze the news to see if it's positive or negative, and that way you can have like an analysis of the polit political state of, I don't know, a country by analyzing the news, okay? So that's an example of uh, recognizing celebrities. So let me show you with a quick demo. Again, um, in a portal, we have one for the computer service as well, okay, a demo portal. Um, I'm going to upload an image. Let's see, one that is, Maybe hard to analyze or strange. Okay, this is a photo of my cat. 
Um, let's see if it loads. I am from Sevilla, so I dressed her like this for Halloween. And I know I shouldn't, but I did. And that's my cat. <laughs> so um, let's see what this service tells us about this photo. First, it tells us that there's a floor, it's indoor. Um, there's a table, there's a color red, which is you know the costume. There's a cat, the cat is white, et cetera, et cetera. And then here we see, um, this is called a caption, which is basically like a description of the image. And indeed, there's a cat sitting on top of a wooden floor. That's basically it. They didn't mention about the costume, but you know, that's very specific. It also returns all the tags that are related to, um, to that photo. And of course, things like format, um, size, and the main colors here. So like mainly red, there's some gray from, I guess, the table and so on. So it gives us a lot of information um, from the image, right? Okay, um, as I mentioned, you can also analyze image that has text, like in this case, okay? There's some kind of original text and it tells us the, the text is in the image. Um, here, I think there's, yeah, there's one for handwritten text, like, you know, if you write a letter, it will, it, it will extract the text from it. And the recognized celebrities, um, and you can also analyze video in real time. Like you can go frame by frame and extract the tags of, um, that are related to each scene, okay? Okay, and generate thumbnails. Well, that's basically what computer vision does for us. Um, let's, compute, uh, ooh, let's continue. Okay. Okay, uh, now we move on to content moderator. Content moderator usually, um, basically uses the image APIs and the text APIs to analyze images, videos, and text, and detect if there is um, offensive content, um, or maybe explicit content, or delicate data in it. It will tell us it will tell us what what's in that image or in the text. If there's any of those of those attributes, okay. Um, I think I'm gonna yeah I'm going to show you a demo of this as well. Sorry for if I keep moving. I think it's better if we see it in a demo. Because that way we can see it. Okay, so this is another demo portal. Um, as I said, you can apply content moderator to images, videos, or text. Let's just try with text. Um, you can upload, you can just paste whichever text you want here. Uh, or you can just use a sample one. Let's do that. Okay, click submit and now review. And now it will give us a review of what, um, what this text had, okay? It does mention that there's a word that could be offensive. That's in yellow here. And it also highlights sensitive data. So it detects that there's an email, there's a phone number, an IP address, uh, an address. Okay, and that's what we see on the right. Okay, um, detected email, um, detected address, and so on. So we can use this, this is pretty um, powerful. Um, so there are some like common things that it will detect, but if we have our own custom ones like if I think that a word is offensive and most people don't, but I really want to detect that word and none of my employees to see it, I could actually add, add my custom tags to this and it will start detecting them um, from then on, okay? All right, video indexer. Video indexer is really powerful uh, because basically we have our video, we make one call to the API and in the background it is calling 18 different APIs. So those are you know, speech, image, text, to analyze everything that's in that video. So basically, we get a video and we can see, um, okay, we can detect the faces in that video. It will tell us who they are, if they are known, like you know, celebrities or politicians. It will give us a name. Um, it will tell us, like it will detect if there's text in the image, um, in the video, it will tell us that text. Uh, it will give us tags, it will tell us if the messages being said in the video are positive or negative, it will give us all the information possible from video. And also translate, like it will add subtitles, things like that, okay? So let me show you with a quick demo as well. Um, here, okay, so this is the demo portal for Video Indexer. I can have my own library, um, or I can use the sample ones. Just for the interest of time, I'll use the sample one because um, if I upload a video, it won't take long, but then it has to index it, and that can take, well, it depends, like five minutes or a bit more, it depends on the video, okay? But just so that, you know, you don't have to wait for the indexing, I'll use one of the sample ones. I think this one has a lot of people, so that, let's test with this one. Let's give it a minute. Okay, so we can see it's already um, loading up all the people that appear in that video. 
and let me stop the video. Um, the cool thing about this is, okay, so it detects the people. It's people that it knows, so it gives me the name there, see? But it also tells me exactly in which frames of the video that person appears. All right, so if I select, for example, this person, and I click um, next, it will go to the keyframe where that person appears. Okay, and that way I can keep going to the keyframes, and if I'm only interested in one of the person, I can you know, go to those keyframes directly. Okay, um, other things it does, well, it, it mentions the main topics of that talk, uh, the keywords, labels, uh, if any brands are mentioned, it will tell me here as well. Uh, emotions, like are there you know, very positive messages being said here, or sad ones, or negative ones. And also give me some keyframes, like you know, th uh, frames that it thinks are important in this video. So this is pretty neat. Um, I can also add, let me see here, subtitles. I can add translation if I want. <coughs> So, of course, you know, if you have to process a lot of videos, do a lot of video production, this is pretty neat because that work is done for you, okay? You don't have to do it manually. And another cool thing about Video Indexer is, um, as I said, it analyzes the images, um, the text that appears in the images and what is being said, the conversation. So, we can actually search for a word here, for example, football, and it will show me all the videos where football is mentioned. Now, it can be mentioned because one of the people in the video say football. It can be mentioned because um, someone has a sign that says football, or because there's an image of people playing football. Um, well, it tells me exactly in which frames of the video that you know, word or mention of the word or people playing football appears. So if I click directly on this, it will go directly to um, either the word or people playing football or things like that, okay? see. So indeed, people are playing football there. So it's you know, you know, really indexing videos like to a really cool level, <laughs> okay? Custom vision. Custom vision is about analyzing images. Now you might say, okay, but you already showed computer vision. Why would we want this? Well, computer vision um, will give us an analysis of the images where it detects common objects. Like, I know, you pass uh, an image of a car, it will tell you it's a car, the color, it might even tell you the maker and the model, okay? It'll give you some additional information. But maybe you work in a very specific industry where you, know, you have images of objects that are not very common or that most people don't, don't work with, and you need to have a model that will detect those, um, those objects in the images. We can use custom vision uh, to upload a set of images, tag them, okay? So you tell you know, this object corresponds to this tag that I've just created. You click on a train button, and then you have your, mo your model. So from then on, you can use your model um, to detect those objects in those images, okay? And it's all done um, visually. Like you don't, you still don't have to know about machine learning, about what the algorithms are in the background or anything. It's just, you know, upload images, tag them, click on train, and that's it, okay? Um, one good thing about, a good thing about custom vision is, okay, so you can use the services on the cloud or you can export them to um, other formats like TensorFlow or Onyx, okay? And then you can use them on IoT devices or on on-premise devices or you know, other kinds of devices. It doesn't have to be running on the cloud necessarily, okay? And let's do a quick comparison. Like when would you use custom vision and when would you use computer vision? If you want to analyze images of fruit, of apples, and you just wanna know if there are apples in the image, you can call computer vision and it will tell you there are two apples, one is red, uh, one is green, the background is white, okay? That's what computer vision would do. Um, but if, your business, if you, your business is selling fruit, you might actually want to know what kind of apple each uh, type is. So you could use custom vision, send images of these apples, um, tag them as, I think it's Granny Smith and Red Delicious, and then after that, your model will detect um, you know, the type of apple in this image, not just the color, not just that it is an apple, but also the type. So it'll be you know, more customized to your business or to your industry. Another example would be, um, for example, if you work in healthcare and you have to handle images of, I don't know, bacteria or things like that that are not very common, maybe you want to, a model that will detect the kind of bacteria from images based on the shape or on the color or things like that, okay? Then you could also use uh, custom vision. So. Next one is unified speech. Unified speech, um, we can use it to convert, uh, okay, so a conversation or speech onto text, to do the transcript, 
of that, um, of that, uh, that conversation. We can use it to give voice, a natural voice to a text, okay, so a text to speech. Um, and there are nice things like, okay, so you can train this so that it will detect your accents or specific vocabulary. It's not just the standard ones. And you can also add voice fonts. So, um, you know, if, you if you're doing text to speech, you can use the standard voices, that's fine. But you can also add your voice fonts so it'll be a customized voice for you, okay? So you have um, a lot of customizations available here. And the next one is text analytics. Um, this is probably the one that is used the most because basically it takes the text and it gives you all the information from that text. It understands what, uh, what is being said there. Now you can do many things like sentiment analysis. It will tell you if that text is positive, negative, it's talking good or bad about a certain topic. Um, key phrase extraction, like what are the keywords in that text, uh, and language detection. It will tell you if it's English, if it's Spanish, what language it is, okay? So let's do a few demos of this. Again, here there's also a demo portal. I just pasted this text, but I can, you know, enter whichever I want, click on analyze, and it will give me the, the information from the text analysis um, API. So first, um, we see the language. It's 100% sure that it is English. Next, it tells me that the main keyword or key phrase here is commit event. And then also it gives us information about the sentiment. It says um, it is positive. Now sentiment, basically, if, if this returned like a 20%, it would mean that it's negative. If it returns 50%, it means that it's neutral. Okay, maybe I could say, um, I'm here at commit. That's neutral, that's not good or bad. It's just a fact, right? And if it's over maybe like, I don't know, 60%, 70%, then we can consider that it is positive, okay? And again, just like before, we see the JSON that's returned to us, okay? We have all the information there about language, sentiment, and key phrase, all right? Now, um, okay, these demo portals are cool, but what if you test them? You say, okay, yeah, this is neat. I want to use it in my project, in my code. How can I call these APIs? Well, for this, I'm going to show you, um, let's start with JavaScript. Okay, I'm going to show you this. This is just um, very simple JavaScript where here what I do is I declare documents which contains two phrases, okay? The first one is positive. This commit event is exceptional. And the second one is uh, negative. This talk is really bad. And what I do is I call a function um, and I pass on those documents, okay? Now function is here, get sentiments. And what I do here is basically um, send an HTTPS request. In the parameters, in the headers, what I add is the, uh, the URL or the path to the endpoint, okay? The text analytics um, API has an endpoint. I just pass it here. I've declared it up here. See, okay? So I just pass that in the headers and then, in the parameters, and then here in the header, I add an access key. Um, an access key is basically just an ID that when you sign, sign up for one of these services, it returns you an ID, and from then on you can use it with, you know, wherever you want in your code to call these APIs. So, I um, send a request, and I analyze the answer, or the response, uh, in this function. And it's just right here, okay? And what it does, basically, it just um, logs the body of the JSON that's returned onto the console, okay? So let's see what happens if I um, run this. I could run it from here, but let me run it from the console. Uh, am I in the right one? Yep. Okay, you can see it in the background, right? If not, I can make it bigger. Okay, so I'm calling the code, and indeed it returns the JSON telling me, okay, the first document um, is very positive because it got 84%, and the second one is very negative because it's a 33%. Okay, so, so that's the, if we want to call it from our JavaScript. Um, what if we have a project in Python? How can we call these APIs from Python? Well, let me open up here um, a Jupyter Notebook. If you work with Python, this is probably already familiar to you, notebooks. Um, basically, what I have here is, well, the URLs that I said, the IDs, the access keys. Um, I declare the documents with the two phrases, one positive, one negative. I call the URL, well, I, I declare the URL, and now I hit, uh, here I make the HTTP request. It's running, and I'll get the result here, okay? So in, the in this first case, I call the language API, and it returned that indeed those, um, both phrases are in English. 
Now the next one is a sentiment analysis API. I do the same thing, call it, and I get the result in a JSON saying the first one's positive, the second one's negative, and the same thing for key phrases, exactly the same, okay? And I get the result. Commit event is the keyword in the first one, talks is the keyword in the second one. So as you see, it's um, quite simple. I just, you know, call the, the API, I send an HTTP request, and I analyze the JSON that it returns, okay? And this I can use in my project as I want to, okay? Okay, the next one is Lewis, uh, Language Understanding Intelligent Service. This is used very much with bots, with a bot framework or with the Azure um, bot service because it's what we use to understand conversation, to understand what is being said in a conversation, um, if there's a question and it's related to something that was said before, um, all of those things, okay? So that's why it's very much used with bots mainly. And the next one, text translator. Um, so it translates text. <laughs> There's not much else to say about this, but, but yeah. Um, speech translation and, and uh, text translation as well, okay? Next one is Q&A Maker. This one's really cool. Um, it's a bot that's given to us, basically. It's already built. We don't have to worry about how to build a bot. Uh, and what we do is we upload the knowledge base that we have. For example, if we have uh, PDFs or Word documents with information. Um, I can upload that and it'll automatically extract the information of, you know, someone asked this, you can answer this with this information that's from the document, okay? So once we upload the knowledge base, uh, we have that bot, bot that's already um, given to us, it's already built for us, and we can start using it right away. We can start making questions and it will return the information that's related to that question. Um, the cool thing about it is you don't need to code anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The cool thing is you don't need to code anything, okay? You go to the portal, you create, you say I want a new Q&A maker, um, you upload your knowledge base, and you can start using it from then on, okay? It's very straightforward. Okay, next one is uh, visual search. So we all know how to search um, by words or by phrases or things like that. That's very common, but what if we could search by images? So, um, for example, say that I have a store where I sell shoes, and someone comes in and says, okay, I don't know what shoes I want, but my sister wore these to her wedding and they showed me a photo, okay? So I would like to have some that are similar. Well, you can get that image, um, pass it on to visual search, and it will give you images of shoes which are similar, okay? Shoes from your catalog. So you can tell the customer, okay, so we have these shoes which are very similar. Same thing for our furniture, okay? Someone might uh, go to your store and say, um, I saw this, in, this photo of, um, of a table in the internet that I really like. Do you have anything similar to this? Well, you do the same thing. You search for it, take the elements from your catalog or the tables from your catalog that are similar, and you can you know, show it to your customer. So um, we know now what the APIs are. We know where to use them, how. But um, what are some real life scenarios where this could be useful? Well, I think one of them would be to avoid accidents, okay? If we can analyze image, text, and things like that, we can probably um, avoid a lot of accidents happening. Like, for example, in traffic. I think there's a video, yeah. In traffic, um, often we can see that, you know, a vehicle will stop where it shouldn't, and that can create a dangerous situation, okay? Cars might, you know, run into that vehicle, or when it tries to leave, it might run into other vehicles, things like that. Well, if we um, apply analysis to these images, we can tag that as red and then, you know, call the nearest police station and tell them, you know, you have to go there and tell that person to, to leave the, the road, okay? The same thing for motorcycles, okay? Maybe that motorcycle thinks, oh, I'm very small, I'll just stop here, it won't bother anyone, but that can be dangerous. So I can, you know, track this, monitor it, detect it, and send a notification on, or an alert to the police or whoever, whoever needs to go there. And the same thing for pedest pedestrians, okay? People sometimes cross where they shouldn't. I can analyze the image, I see all the cars going by, but I see that that person is crossing where it shouldn't, that can be dangerous, so maybe I have to take a look and see why are they crossing there, maybe I need to um, add a stoplight somewhere um, because you know, people are crossing here when they shouldn't, things like that, okay? So it's a way to avoid accidents. Um, another place or another area where there are a lot of accidents are in construction sites. So there are some safety measures, but if, all workers, if not all workers follow those safety measures, we could have um, accidents, okay? So we can actually detect um, things like this. Okay, a worker has a helmet in their, in their hand, so I tag it as red. 
Now he's put it on his head, now it's green. So I can actually have an image of my construction site of all the workers in it um, and detect if they're all um, applying the safety measures or if some are not. And that way I can talk to them and say, you know, this is really important. We don't want to have any accidents here. Please put your helmets on and things like that, okay? Another area would be um, medical or healthcare. Um, so people who are in hospitals might be weak or ill, of course. <laughs> if not, they wouldn't be there. Um, so there can be accidents as well. One would be, for example, um, when, they, when they get up from the bed, some actually fall or you know, run out of strength and they fall, things like that. So I can actually monitor the rooms and see if, for example, there's someone lying down in a bed with the rails up, that's perfect, there's no risk. If they're lying in bed but the rails are down, that can be a bit risky because if they move, they might fall. Or if they're sitting up, so that's like a risky situation. You know, Maybe she'll stand up and it'll be fine or maybe she'll fall and I'll need to call a nurse or a doctor right away, okay? So those are like real life scenarios where this can be really, really useful. So, um, some things that are very, very new to cognitive services, in fact, I think they were, whoops, we were here. These features are really, really new. Uh, one is that now we can build our models and export them to a Docker container. So we can actually you know, start, we can train and start using them in the cloud, but then we can export it to a container and, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and use them on premises or on our edge devices. So that's really um, useful because we'll have low latency, okay? We won't have to you know, uh, do all the um, API, call, API calls to the cloud and so on. We can actually use that model directly on premises. So that'll be faster. Another thing is we will have control over updates. Um, cognitive services now and then will have updates, you know, new features, new things. We might also want to um, you know, train our models and make them I don't know, grow, et cetera, or be better or detect more things. We can do all of that on the cloud and the results will be immediate. But maybe we don't want to apply all of those updates until we're completely sure and it's completely stable it's onto production. Well, we can wait to do that, okay? We can do everything in the cloud, see how it goes, and then once we're ready, then we export it to container and apply it um, on premise, okay? So we have more control over updates in that way. And then of course, portable architecture, that's, you know, we have a container, we have portable architecture. So that's pretty cool. Now this, um, it's not available for all of the APIs, but it is available for uh, the ones that I mentioned here, okay? I do believe they're probably more in the roadmap, um, but right now the ones that are available today are these right here, okay? So you can start using them in containers right away. Okay, so um, another new feature is logo detection. This is part of custom vision. So now you can actually detect logos. So um, if you're a startup company and you want to see how the logo of your company is doing, if people are posting images, uh, wearing t-shirts with the logo or things like that, um, you can detect that. If you've just launched a new product and you want to see how it is doing, if people are putting you know, images of that product on internet and social media, well, you can um, you know, bring those, uh, take those images, detect the logo, and then maybe if it's a tweet, analyze the tweet and see if they're talking well or badly about your product, you know, things like that, okay? So um, let me do a quick demo. I think we have time, yep. Um, this one here is just a project I created to detect the GitHub logo. So basically what I did, and remember, this is still a custom vision, okay? It's just logo detection in particular. What I did is, well, here, I said, okay, upload a set of images, okay? I, I just took a, a lot of um, images with a GitHub logo. Um, you will need at least 15 images so that it will train, so that it will actually, you know, start to detect the logo. Of course, the more, the better. It will be more precise, but you can start with 15 images only, okay? And once I have all of those images, what I do is I tag each of them. So I go to this one and I say, um, okay, this, is, this area right here is a logo. Actually, I think I can click on it. Do, do, do. Okay, see? Um, but if it's not that, I can go like this and say, okay, it's all of this or whatever, okay? And I can add new tags. I can customize it in this way. Okay, so once it is trained, which is basically the button that's right here, um, I can do a quick test. And again, I can enter a URL of an image or get a local file. If I, oh, let's forget about my cat because she's not wearing a GitHub logo. Um, uh, logo detection here, okay. Let me take one from here that I didn't use for training. For example, this one. I didn't use that one. And let's see if it detects the logo. It did, okay? And actually detected GitHub as well because it's in text there. 
Um, so, okay, so this is how logo detection works, actually. It's quite simple, okay? Um, all right. Well, I think we're almost at the end, basically. Let me just show you one more thing. Um, when you get the slides for this, you'll see that there are a lot of links. Um, they're very useful. One of them is the cognitive services directory, which is this one. It's the first link that I've added. And the good thing about this, it has direct links to the demo portals that I've showed, um, to the documentation, if you want some trial of each of them, and it's organized by category, okay? So vision, speech, etc. Okay, so these are the um, resources. You can check them out when you have the slides. Um, there's one that's very interesting as well. It's the intelligent kiosk. It's this one right here. It's like you open it in Snap, which uh, demos all of the services in very kind of fun and attractive ways, so that's pretty cool. And okay, but you say, where are the slides? Well, if you want them, you can wait until the, they are published, or you can just send me an email at jmoreiro at microsoft.com. In the subject, you can just say commit, and you will automatically receive them, okay? Um, I won't be manually sending the slides. I actually created a flow to do this automatically, so um, you can get them that way, okay? It might take, today's running a bit slow. It might take, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20, but you'll eventually get them. And if not, you can always, you know, uh, okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, and that's my contact information. I'll put it a bit larger in case it's not clear. And of course, happy to contact or to connect through LinkedIn or Twitter or send me an email, okay? So any questions or anything? Yep. Um, I have one. Um, okay, so HTTP requests are by definition slow. Hmm. Is there any other protocol to send a request to the API? So it's just like a RESTful APIs? Um, it's RESTful APIs. I'm trying to think because there are, well, there are SDKs, but I think they do HTTP requests. I could check if there are any other options. If you want me to send, if you want to send me an email, I'll try to see if there are other, if there are other alternatives. Okay. What? Any question? Or Isa, do you know? She's a colleague here. <laughs> oh, okay. The question was: Is there any alternative to HTTP requests to call the APIs? No, but for the cognitive services. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> that doesn't apply here. I was thinking in the domain container. Uh, hmm. no, I We'd have to check. <laughs> okay. Any um, other questions? Okay. Yeah, uh, sure. Question. Go ahead. Um, how is the viability of using these products in production uh, products? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, most of the APIs are enterprise ready. Um, of course, if you go into each API, the documentation, you'll see you know, more specifically. Um, if, there anything that's, if there's anything that's in preview or if it's uh, ready, um, it you would have to check for each API, but most of them, I believe, are enterprise ready. So, and actually, we do have customers who are using them uh, in production and in their companies, either for you know, applications or services for external customers or for their internal employees or internal processes and so on. You know? okay. Any more questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you.